Okay, uh, now I'm going to show you what I carry in my cargo bag. I uh, have a couple of things in here that I keep in my truck, but when I'm on the ATV, I just throw this bag into uh, the uh, cargo bag of the ATV. Uh, this has uh, got a, uh, a waterproof bag. I uh, have a uh, long sleeve shirt. Sometimes I don't need a jacket, I just need a long sleeve shirt. And a jacket. It's an all weather jacket. So it could be a rain, raining and this will, this will protect me, but it's just a jacket, a light jacket. There are times when I'm, when I'm gone, if I'm gonna spend the night or I'm gonna be gone uh, for any amount of time, I'll, I'll put some uh, short of this in there, a couple of pairs of socks. Um, um, but other than that, that's what I keep in this bag. My jacket, my long sleeve shirt, If I'm going to be gone for any amount of time, I'll just put my shorts in there or a couple of pairs of socks and uh, I'm ready. I could spend a couple of days out there. This is all the, the um, that I'll need and this is in a uh, waterproof bag. Uh, this is my t uh, poncho. As in the military, I wore a poncho similar to this uh, during the monsoon seasons. I literally lived in this damn thing. Um, I'm very comfortable with one of these, uh, nostalgia-wise. Uh, I, I, I use this before I use my raincoat. Uh, if it's just a, uh, you know, afternoon uh, rain, uh, yeah, you know, just an afternoon uh, cloud burst a uh, couple hours will do us uh, um, we'll sit under the trees or I have an umbrella my wife and I will sit under it just but if it's more than that and the storm turns into a storm uh, we'll go to this but this poncho is also like a tent uh, it is like a canvas and I could set it up and we could we could sit out just about anything under this thing here uh, I've got the the rope the tie downs and uh, we can sit and uh, enjoy ourselves uh, in comfort and just wait for it to pass um, in that sitting in comfort uh, my wife was done with this about 30 years ago and she threw it away it's one of those knee pad things that uh, uh, used in the garden and uh, I went and I I brought it out and I carried it in my pack uh, I would put this up against my back parked there and all my gear was in there and whenever we would sit or we're hunkered down or we're just waiting I would sit on sit on a, on a hard rock or if my ATV now that I have my ATV if I got to put air in my tire Instead of kneeling on the ground, I kneel on this. If we stop and we're gonna have lunch, this is the right size on my ATV, I'll put it on the running board and my wife sits on this. That's her seat. So she has a place to sit. So this is a, you know, a, 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 I didn't pay anything for it. I guess my wife bought it, you know, so many years ago, but it still has a life that it'll all last me and it has a function that's more important than probably I am other than driving the ATV and then this is mine uh, this is a gift uh, it's a field and stream I'm able to just set it up and I can sit on it it's a little bench bench seat Great for fishing, great for sitting next to Diane while we're under the tarp, eating lunch. I use that a lot. You gotta have a shovel. You just gotta. The law says anybody who goes out into the wilderness 
anybody who has a roll of tissue paper, you must have a shovel. If you don't have a shovel, they could put you in prison. 200 years, you have to have a shovel. This one works for me because it folds down real small and it fits in my cargo bag. And I won't go to prison because it doesn't say what kind of shovel you have to have. These I keep in the, uh, in the truck. These are my stirrups to the ATV. My wife is a um, shorter person than I am and she can't reach down to the bottom of the running board. So you put these on and you cinch them up to where she can use the, <clears throat> her feet to keep her balance on the seat. And they work really well, makes it easier for her. And they're very, um, <clears throat> very convenient, easy to stow, easy to carry. Um, they work, they, they work great. I don't see a name on these, oh, there it is right there. I've had these for quite a few years. They work great, I love them. They stow away, they, they're very easy to use, very easy to install. This one here is a very important piece of my, my equipment here. This is my walking stick. <clears throat> now if you go to Costco, you can get a package of two for 25 bucks. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, my, I got one and my wife has one. Now what I use mine for is, uh, this is a Cascade Mountain, technologies um, when I'm scrounging around all on occasion I can't get in an area because of the sagebrush but I want to get in there to see I'll take this and I'll open it up to my walking you know from my walking stick dimension and I use it to scare away all the rattlesnakes or let the rattlesnakes know that I'm there. And I use it for hiking to help because I have to, uh, what I do is I take photographs of stone rocks and a lot of these rocks are at the base, at the base of the, the cliff and then the, the base of the cliff has dirt that goes down and I have to hike up to it. So this is my walking stick that helps me get up to the, and I take photographs of the textures and the moss and the, and the, um, the formations that are on those stones so this is a definite must I've already gone through it I think I'm gonna have to go uh, find me another one or get me um, a new hookup here but I've actually literally worn this one out I've, I've used it quite a bit But in the desert country, you need something because of the rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes are a definite uh, threat and uh, take it very seriously. This here is my Zach. My uh, son, Bubba, uh, gave this to me one year. He's given me several of these in, in the past years. Uh, this one here has turned out to be my favorite. It fits in the ATV perfectly. Um, I just happened to... Uh, store my gloves in my cooler this is a cloth cooler and uh, it folds down breaks down but it fits perfectly in my ATV and I put a six pack of uh, water in here and uh, I could put eight bottles of water I carry usually have some sweet uh, uh, coke or something else that's in there because uh, after a while a lot of sweating I need some kind of um, sugar some kind of a sweet drink instead of just water but uh, <clears throat> what I do is I fill this guy up with ice and then I fill it up with water and I put this in the ATV cargo bag and this is full of water bottled water and a couple of bottles or a couple of pop and I put uh, and I just close it up I don't have to put any kind of ice or or 
refrigerant froze, frozen bags or anything in there. So as I'm drinking water out of here and I deplete it, I just take a bottle here and I fill this up. And that ice will last me all day. I've never had it run out on me. And uh, now that Diane's been riding with me more, she has one. So now, you know, it just makes life a lot more comfortable. Um, so throughout a whole day for the amount of water, we'll drink about, out of the eight bottles that are in here, we'll drink about two each. We'll fill it up. So we'll do four and we've still got two more when, by the time we're done there. And then I keep several in the truck so that if we need to, I can replenish this. But uh, so far I've not had to do, to do that. So we fill Zach up with ice, fill him up with water, put him in the, um, in the uh, cargo bag and um, that's what we drink out of. Works great. And so that I always know where my driving gloves, I always keep them in my cooler. And that is the full tour. In my cooler here, I always find places to stash things. Um, I have an assortment of um, plastic bags. Never know when those are gonna come in handy. Uh, paper towels. My brother's birthday is in uh, November and, and we haven't in a long, many years, but we used to go hiking on his birthday, November the 11th, I think it was. And I have uh, trash bags. And that was the time of the prickly pear harvest, cactus fruit, they're, they're purple. And uh, we would, uh, we both, we smoked at the time, so we would f go up into the Sandias or we'd go into the desert and we'd find these uh, cactus and we'd collect them and we'd build a little fire and we'd, with the two sticks, you just hold the the pear over the the fire to burn all of the, 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 the cactus spines off and then you just peel them and that's what we would eat that would that was our 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 meal we would go up there and have our meal and that's what it was the only problem with um prickly pear is they're purple and the stain lasts for days it doesn't wash off it just wears off <laughs> so whenever we were up there uh you knew where we were at because we were all purple lipped <laughs> Okay, well, uh, this is my tour. I hope I've uh, been able to uh, open some uh, thinking uh, and ideas for you. Um, this will probably change again. Uh, like I said, I'm constantly uh, um, checking out what you're doing. And uh, don't be surprised if I steal your idea. <laughs> okay, well, um, happy adventures. This is Crazy Bear signing out. Bye. This is a four-part series. In the next episode, Crazy Bear reviews the junk in his front trunk.